Hi, how are you? I hope you're doing well today. Uh, I'm doing very well, and uh, I had a really nice breakfast with my my cousin Steve, who is a great friend of mine. And we had bagels and lox bread, and onions and uh, uh, very salty olives that uh, a lot of uh, Jewish families will often have with lox bread or lox and bagels. I'm very lucky that I live in a town which has one of the very best bagel bakeries I have ever had. And speaking of someone who's lived in, in New York for many years, uh, the bagels here are, are better than anything that I know of in New York. I haven't, uh, I haven't fully scattered out Brooklyn or, or, the, or the Bronx, but um, these are great. And, you know, yesterday I did a video about walking in the woods while I was walking my dog. And... Um, in that video, I really talked about how the mind um, can't understand anything. And I, I wanted to go back to that point. Uh, you know, we can talk about bagels, and I probably would prefer talking about bagels than philosophy, frankly. But, but the mind can enjoy a bagel, but it can never understand a bagel. And when we word it like that, the mind can never understand a bagel. We also hear how absurd the question is, don't we? Why would the mind ever want to understand a bagel? I mean, what is there to understand? But if you can, as the, as the poet Blake said, that, that the universe is contained in a grain of sand, I think we could also say that the universe is contained in a bagel. And if the question about understanding or getting the bagel is ridiculous, then the whole idea of understanding life, or me, or you, is also ridiculous. And so many of us, when we're on this spiritual journey, use this, this role of the understanding person, like the, the ultimate guru, who, can, who understands it all, and who you know, sits on these platforms and, and looks particularly understanding. It's, it's, it's a, it's a curious irony when we realize that understanding is absolutely and completely a dead end. And I think that's the whole purpose. The, the total purpose of the spiritual journey is to see that understanding is a dead end. And why is that so? And here's my theory. It's so because the ego loves the idea of understanding. When the ego thinks it understands something, that it gets it that it, it kind of controls it. It has a, oh yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a rose. I can name it. And when I name something, I have some control over it. Oh, he's a, he's a great guru. Uh, you can learn a lot from him. I've, I'm naming the situation. I am bestowing my understanding onto you until we realize that whatever I think I understand is probably an illusion. We don't understand anything. Just as we don't understand that bagel, we don't understand this pen. It just is. And its isness is expressed perfectly through observation. And observation is the act of being alive. The whole purpose of the spiritual journey is to dismantle that egotistical role of I am the agent of understanding. It's a very grandiose role, isn't it? I can understand. I mean, I've understood a million things in the past, haven't I? I can certainly understand this. But no one raises their hand and go, wait, wait, wait. What? Tell us exactly. What in your past did you understand? You're laying claim to this whole universe of understanding. What is it you understand? And I think if you were to seriously ask me that question, I would be stumped. I could claim certain understandings, but if you questioned me, if you really interrogated me, I probably could not support my contention. It's just my ego talking. It's my ego believes in the role of he who can understand, because that's what egos do. The egos assume a role that it can control things, it can get things, it can do things. 
That's what egos do. Egos are grandiose. Or they're the opposite. I can't understand anything. I can't control anything. I am so depressed. Life is completely taken over. I'm completely out of control. It's always the polarity, the duality of opposites. And that's what the ego's in. If it can't understand it, then it's lost. It falls back into complete despair and misery. So yesterday in that walk through the woods, I talked about that we don't really understand anything. I mean, if you can't understand this pen, if you can't understand a bagel, I mean, you know, you, you don't have much shot of understanding anything, do you? But we can always question. We can always be alive to this moment, to explore it, to investigate it. And isn't it that what aliveness is? You know, when you're with a really good friend and you talk about subjects that interest you and, and you go to an art museum and you see a, a painting that strikes you in some way, you're exploring the experience of feeling. And that is what aliveness is. And when we, when we give up all of those egotistical notions that make us and others feel so miserable, we become alive to this moment. And that whole sense of, of openness, which is the opposite of contraction, and when we, when we think we get something, we're contracted about that thing. We're, we're like a fist. When we open up into simply exploring this moment, not coming in with a fixed attitude, because a fixed attitude means we're getting it, we understand it, just exploring it, this moment. Wow, you know, look what's going on. I'm, right now I'm looking at these beautiful trees outside and very, very cool screensaver on my computer. And I, you know, and I try to do that. I hear I'm going to say something. I tried doing this exploration when I wrote my book. It was all about questions. What's going on? What is really happening in our lives? And it's the questioning without the answers. That's the beauty. The ego says, uh, I'm sick of the questions. I only want answers. Aliveness says, I love the questions. I'm really kind of indifferent to the answers. And I think that's what the spiritual journey is all about. I'm alive to the questions without seeking any answer at all.